wandering He told me tales And he drank my wine Everybody's got to be happy, everyone should sing Cause we know the joy of life, the peace that love can bring David Alexander Infinite Energy Series here on YouTube. This channel is now active again after a pause where uh, we have been busy doing experiments and uh, research. This is the first video in the series of new videos being video 11 and uh, on that note let me introduce my good friend David Alexander. Thank you Bjorn. This channel is indeed active again, but much better than before. A theme song personally played by my good friend Bjorn Trofton. Awesome. Thank you, David. So why don't you tell our viewers a little bit about what they can expect uh, to see as the new content and a new format of this series? Well, Bjorn, the term infinite energy, and others call it free energy, is a huge topic. A number of scientists and inventors have invented devices which produce useful amounts of real energy, heat, light, motion, but they don't burn any fuel, they don't use solar or wind or nuclear as an energy source. Wow. So hold on there, David. So. I've traveled quite a bit, met a bunch of people over the years and had a lot of different conversations and some of those even about the possibility and the hope for free or infinite energy. To be real, but it's always had this up in the clouds, up in the skies kind of feeling to it. Since we've become friends, you have really laid out a very good case for infinite energy and presented a lot of data, a lot of information that I had not been aware of uh, before. And yet, for most people, this really seems to be the thing that's very hard to grasp, that it could be real. Why is that? Well, Bjorn, you just asked the key core 
question. Or as the famous bard said, to be or not to be, that is the question. Existence itself. That's where we begin to present this topic. Why don't more people know that infinite energy or free energy is real? And why is it not available to we the people? So I begin by mentioning the work of Dr. Peter Lindemann. Oh, so I remember you showing me that video with uh, Dr. Peter Lindemann from probably 30 years ago where he and those two other guys were running experiments in that lab trying to replicate the work of Dr. Nikola Tesla. Fascinating. That's right. The two guys were Eric Dollard and Tom Brown. All three were part of the Borderland Science Research Foundation. And the two videos demonstrated some key discoveries of Nikola Tesla. I met Dr. Lindemann at a conference once. Beyond his valuable research, he published on the internet a very clear analysis, his explanation of why we don't have infinite or, or free energy. It's called The World of Free Energy. We give a link to it below, as well as links to the two videos. That's great. And that article, David, isn't that what you covered in the very first video in this series? Yes, it was. But my recent thinking is that it should be covered again at a deeper level. I hope we can reach more people and explain more clearly just why infinite energy is not yet considered real in the mass consciousness. Well, so maybe then we could start with giving a sort of a high-level overview over Dr. Lindemann's article and then cover some of the points uh, in greater detail. Absolutely. Dr. Lindemann mentions from 1890s electric trade journals there were articles about the expansion and commercialization of technology taking place in the United States. Telephones, cars, home electricity, later on airplanes, all of these were known. But also, and not very well known, new sources of energy were being discovered. Stubble field was obtaining electric currents right out of the ground. And Tesla was using longitudinal electric waves to send electric energy over long distances. This, this was documented. There were thousands of other discoveries and inventions that might have led to infinite free energy all the way up to the present. All of these have been kept from the public. Why? And why is the question I want the answer to. How could all that technology be hidden away, gone, buried? It's incredible. Incredible. But from personal experience, I know it's true. Forty years ago, I worked for a research lab near Washington, D.C where we very carefully measured the power going in and the power coming out of a very simple device. The output power was significantly greater than the input power. The people in charge of the experiment refused to believe that such a thing could be possible. And I was getting in some trouble for pointing out the overunity. As we proceed with this series, we will be examining a number of such suppressed discoveries. Stay tuned. Yes, stay tuned indeed, because uh, I hope at a later point we'll be able to visit uh, your experience in that lab that you mentioned. 
because I mean that's a very interesting story all in itself. However, for right now, let's stick with uh, Peter Lindemann. And uh, so, just how does Dr. Lindemann explain um, how these infinite energy or free energy technologies are being suppressed? Dr. Lindemann states that there are four major reasons we don't have this technology today. Number one, banks and the money system. Number two, relations between governments. Number three, the psychology of free energy inventors or people falsely claiming to be such an inventor. And the fourth, We'll leave that for now as a mystery to be answered. A mystery? Now, I want to hear about that one. But first, you're talking about banks. Um, what do banks and the money system actually have to do with the suppression of infinite energy technology? Well, Bjorn, Dr. Lindemann explains that the world's largest banks are owned by the world's wealthiest people. These people control the world's economies by setting the interest rates for the lending of money. They set the interest rate down and the economy expands. They set the interest rate up and the economy contracts. Directly or indirectly, a major cost of business or manufacturing is the cost of energy. If you have a source of very cheap energy, the banking money system is no longer able to control you. You are free from the cost of energy. In fact, as you pointed out to me several weeks ago, we were talking about it, a flow of energy is essentially a flow of money. It is interesting to think of it that way. It is interesting to think of it that way. So then, David, what exactly do these banking monopolies do to block the commercialization and the availability of these free energy devices? Bank owners, who also own the energy companies, covertly control the world by using enforcers. If you were trying to market a free energy device, you would face these things. First of all, there would be the debunkers. And they would say things like, that device can't possibly work. It violates the laws of physics. Well, let me tell you, I have some comments coming in a future video about how the so-called laws of physics have been misapplied or misunderstood or misstated and that's coming then then going down the list they would use character assassination they would use arson which they used against Nikola Tesla they uh, blew up and burned down his research laboratory then they used intimidation of inventors and their families for example, many people have heard of the late John Bedini, who died four years ago. And in the beginning of his career, he was driving down the road and stopped by a car with four thugs in it. And they told John that if they ever caught him driving his car on anything other than gasoline, they would kill him. And then just to make the point, they pulled him out of his car and threw him against a concrete wall, which did not help his health. So then, of course, the end of that list of, of what, pe what would be done would be physical assassination. I have personally met many free energy inventors and scientists. Now, if you consider three of these, Paul Brown, Stan Myers, and Dr. Gene Malov. I met all three of these. 
and all three of them died under very strange conditions. All this is sobering. However, Dr. Lindemann says, the environment for infinite energy is better than ever and improving, so there is hope. The time is ripe. Yes, David, and let us hope that he is right about that, that this is the right time and the right time for this information to come forth. And although a lot of what you just talked about is indeed very sobering, we will keep making videos and use this channel to shed light on some of the valuable contributions that these individuals have made. So, David, let our viewers know what they can look forward to in the next video. Yes. Dr. Lindemann's second and third reasons we don't have infinite energy will be a main topic. Also, a few preview comments about what is coming. So please subscribe if you find this topic interesting and click on the bell. Then YouTube will send you a brief email when we post our next video. Of course, your upvotes and comments are appreciated. So until then, I am David Alexander. And I am Bjarne Trofton. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next video. video.